call us at bo.tt for more info today. From the Guadalajara capital, this is the GBN Television News. GBN covering you from the Grenadine Island chain to Brooklyn, New York, via the World Wide Web on www.gbn.gd. The news headlines is brought to you compliments. GUT Credit Union. Imagine. Having the home of your dreams. Imagine investing in that piece of property you can call your own. Imagine finally doing that home improvement project you've always been thinking about. It's time to stop imagining and start doing. Let the GUT Credit Union help you take the first step with fantastic rates, affordable repayments, and reduced legal fees. Make the move. Get better terms on your mortgage. Use your home equity to make those dreams a reality. Act now. There's really no place like home. GUT Credit Union. It's where you belong. This is the GBN Television News for Tuesday, the 24th of August, 2021. I'm Kristen Lashington. In the headlines, Grenada's health minister to be ticketed for violating COVID-19 protocols following maskless appearance with movie star Steven Seagal. Health officials identify location of COVID-19 clusters across the mainland. Three parishes identified. Calls for review of quarantine protocols for persons entering the country. Preparatory work has begun for the start of the St. John's River flood mitigation project. And in around the globe, private schools in Guyana will not be exempt from vaccination, says the health minister. And COVID-stricken St. Lucian media worker pleads with the public from a hospital bed. Coming up in sports, Grenada's first Paralympic swimmer, Nai Krushank, Krukshank, bears the Grenadian flag at the 2020 Paralympic Games in Tokyo. And CFU Boys Under 14 and Girls Under 14 Challenge Series continues. Details right after this message. Hey folks, you're invited to tune in to Grenada Music to the World program hosted by Eugene Giddens on Saturday mornings from 10 a.m. to 12 noon on Classic Radio 105.5, 105.9, Hot FM 98.5, 98.7, GBN TV and all their social media platforms. The only totally local music program in Grenada representing all genres of music. So it's Green's Music to the World on Saturday. Saturday mornings from 10 a.m. to 12 noon on GBN with the music icon himself, Mr. Eugene Gittens. See you then. Good evening. This is GBN's News at 7. Grenada's health minister says he is willing to pay. He told the media today that he expects to be ticketed for violating COVID-19 protocols. He made the announcement at government's weekly post-cabinet briefing. Rena Pierre thomas tells us more. According to the COVID-19 regulations, failure to wear face covering warrants a charge of minimum $550 and maximum $1,000. Minister for Health Nicholas Steele publicly admitted to violating Grenada's COVID-19 protocols to the media on Tuesday and disclosed that after having a conversation with the Commissioner of Police, he will be ticketed for the offence. And as far as I'm concerned, there is public evidence that I was not wearing a mask and I await my ticket and I will pay my charge. The law and the regulations we put out there is for everybody. And those that were in the vehicle are going to do the same. 
A few days ago, a picture on social media raised many eyebrows as it showed the Minister of Health in a vehicle not wearing his mask. In his company were famous actor Steven Seagal and other individuals also without their masks. The minister stated that no one is above the law and Grenadians should follow by his example. So the law is for everybody. I will pay my charge. I will receive my ticket for not wearing a mask in public and we will move forward and I expect any and everybody else to follow by example as well. It's been 15 months that we've all been dealing with this and yes I dropped my guard and I wasn't wearing my mask and therefore I will pay the consequences. Over the past few days, pictures of other government ministers standing next to the same actor with no mask has been circulating the internet. There is no official word on whether any other minister were also ticketed for violating protocols. For GBN News, I am Rena Pet Thomas reporting. Health officials have confirmed that COVID-19 cases have been reported in three parishes. Most of the cases are locals with no travel history. This is a source of concern for the Ministry of Health, which is presently conducting contact tracing. Rena Pierre Thomas tells us more. Chief Medical Officer Sean Charles said at the weekly post-cabinet briefing that the ministry is engaged in strenuous contact tracing and awaiting results for PCR tests. Um, several parts of the country are affected. Um, the parishes of St. George, um, we have the Northwest, we have the Happy Hill, Moliné, that area, the Northeast, the Vendom, Willis, um, New Hampshire area, we have St. John, um, the principally in Quav. We have St. Andrew. St. Andrew is a bit varied um, because we have cases from um, four different villages in, in, in St. In, in Andrew. Um, so we continue to monitor the situation. There are currently 44 active COVID-19 cases. Seven of the cases are imported, while the other 37 are locals with no travel history. Dr. Charles says the ministry is yet to determine whether Grenada has any community spread. We continue our investigations in the community to find out um, where these cases are linked. Where, if we are unable to find a link for these cases upon investigation, then we will make that determination um, as to whether we have uh, community spread. One individual is presently hospitalized after showing COVID-19 symptoms and is awaiting PCR results to confirm their status. For GBN News, I am Rina Pet Thomas reporting. There are calls for the government to revisit the quarantine protocols for persons entering the country. Trelana Charles has the details. Following government's announcement of an identified COVID-19 cluster and possible community spread, many citizens have shared their concerns about the current length of quarantine for visitors to the island. NDC caretaker for St. Patrick West, Joseph Andal, while speaking on GBN's To The Point program, said the National Democratic Congress wants the government of Grenada to extend the current quarantine period to one week minimum. We believe that more could have been done, and even at this late stage, should be done to mitigate and to offer greater protection to the local population. To this end, the NDC proposes that the quarantine period of two days, 48 hours, and we understand in some cases even less, that that should be scrapped and we should revert to a minimum of one week quarantine for all people entering the country, vaccinated or unvaccinated. According to Andal, two days are not sufficient and may have detrimental effects on the country's economy in the long run. At the end of the day, even as we try to fully reopen our economy, we cannot be pennywise and pound foolish because if we get it wrong, then we won't just have to, to engage in restrictions, but in total shutdown as is occurring in some of our fellow CARICOM countries. And that would be quite counterproductive regarding economic revival. 
However, when asked during Tuesday's post-Cabinet press briefing if government intends to amend the quarantine period, Minister for Health Nicholas Steele had this response. We didn't bring this two-day quarantine, 48-hour quarantine and a 72-hour travel test in the month of August. We didn't reduce the quarantine in the month of August. We didn't change anything in the quarantine in the month of August that wasn't there in the month of July, in the month of June, in the month of May, all the way back to March. So we need to recognize the only thing that changed in the month of August is the mass carnival activities. As of July 31st, 2021, persons entering Grenada by air or sea must be fully vaccinated. They will receive a PCR test on arrival, and once results received after 48 hours are negative, they are free to enter society. Chalona Charles, GBN News. Preparatory work has begun for the start of the St. John's River Flood Mitigation Project. Chris Lena Dunn toured the area on Tuesday. The, 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 um, the situation right now, seeing that they all are going to be commencing the project, I think it's a marvelous idea uh, and, and um, one that is long we've been waiting. Because um, I think, um, in honest, the, the mitigation of, of, of the, um, the river and the ramification that it causes when it flows in, in the vicinity, it, it's really uh, worth um, considering um, remedying. remedying. As the St. John's River Flood Mitigation Project gets set to get off the ground, some villagers had their say. Phyllis Madame Raskadet was one of the individuals who suffered tremendous loss during the recent flood in July of this year. Speaking to GBN on Tuesday, she says it's better late than never. They already stopped, you know, they didn't reach here yet. We haven't had a close contact talk as yet, but that is in the making always should be done already. Right now I should go and check them. But the truth is better late than never. I know it would have happened one day, you know. So I feel glad. Madam Ra says contractors held meeting with villagers, informing them of what is likely to happen. She is optimistic about the future and is exercising patience. It is a very honest truth. I think things is going in place, somebody get a little assistance or somewhere or the other by the government. They are willing to give me some assistance. So I think is in the making, you know, what's going on now, everything is slow and with the COVID, you know, is a problem and a feelings, so much to do, you know, and so much not doing. You know, well, I have a lot of patience. Another villager, though he welcomes the project and how it will impact the preservation of the national stadium as an international facility and other businesses in the community, expresses concern about the conservation of life in the river. We do need it, but at the same time, we have to look at the ecology of the river. Over the years, the river has been known to sustain a lot of livelihood for its many diverse biodiversity that takes place but with the, as you can see they want to do something about it so for, um, I'm just looking and waiting and anticipating to see how both that fragment of the river the biodiversity of it meets the infrastructural part of it and how it will help the better the community in a holistic sense Heavy equipment is at work, clearing up hindrances along the river's path, and steel benders are paving the way for the commencement of work. GBN reached out to contractor of Sunrise Construction Inc., Desmond John, who indicated that at present, they are in preparatory mood for the start of the project. Awarded part three and four of the project, which spans from Stills Bridge down to the back of the River Road post office area. Both the Humback Bridge and Steels Bridge will be replaced when the project gets on stream. The project aims to alleviate flooding in River Road, which tends to obstruct traffic flow and flooded homes and businesses. Christina John, GBN News.
While the St. John's River mitigation project is welcomed by residents and business people, many are questioning the future of their livelihoods, as some may have to move from their current location. Chrislina John has been engaging some of these individuals who may be on the breadline. After 20 years, Augustine Fraser, a mechanic in the River Road area, wants some reassurance that he will be able to return and continue his business operation after the St. John's River mitigation project is complete. Fraser says he was approached by different individuals since 2017, but has not seen anyone since. Now four years had passed, and now that the project is about to commence, he says he is awaiting further directives. Since no, but before when they were taking measurements and all this kind of thing, they came to me and I filled out some forms and all of that, you know. But since then it started, no one has come to me. And me so I told them that I'll work to suit, you know, I'll work to suit because I think it, it whether or not it might be a good, you know, and I even told them, asked them if I could be relocated because I don't see myself as never being a problem, you know. You know so. No mind with nothing really with the project. It's something that has to be done, let it be done. You know, but Fraser says he's willing to work along with whoever is in charge, but he needs some guarantee for the future. Wait because I mean they came and took notes. They came and took a lot and not, not once but several times they came and took notes. So I was expecting really that somebody would come and say something. I told them that I'll work to suit, I hate to tell you, because from ever since for 20 years to be here and more, you know, it's like, well, you know what I mean. I come back in the same place then. Yeah, back in the same place. Fraser is not the only one seeking answers. Omar Peer is another businessman of 17 years whose business will be impacted by the project. He says he was told he will be compensated for the duration of the time he will be out of business, but that was word of mouth years ago and has not heard anything else since. He too is awaiting word for the next move. Happy that the project is going on still same way because everybody getting affected from it, you know. So I'm glad the project going on still, but um, I'm interested to know like when the project reached by my side, where will we be going? Are they really, you know what they're really doing after if they will bring us back or if they will find a place for re relocation? or if that is just a zero for us there, you know? GBN tried establishing contact with ministry officials of what is in store for these business owners. However, their phones went unanswered. Christalina John, GBN News. This is News at 7. Coming up, local farmers express dissatisfaction with the workers assigned by the Farm Labor Support Program. Stay with us. Take your shot and get back to your life. Take your shot and get back to your life. Take your shot, take your shot, take your shot, get back to your life. Take your shot, take your shot, take your shot, get back to your life. Take your shot, shot, take your shot, shot, take your shot, shot, get back to your life. Take your shot, shot, take your shot, shot, take your shot, shot, get back to your life. A message from Republic Bank. Hello, everybody. I have got some exciting news just for you. Grenada is on the road to Dubai Expo 2020. Now, I know the pandemic has slowed us down just a bit, but this is your chance and your opportunity to showcase your business, products, and services to Dubai and to the whole world. So be a sponsor and jump on board. You can contact the Ministry of Foreign Affairs at 536-9818 or 440-2640. You can also pitch us an email at internationalbusinessgda at gmail.com. Grenada is on the road to Dubai Expo 2020, and you do not want to miss this opportunity. So see you there. You can win when you top it up, switch it up, sign it up, bundle up. Easy wins with flow. Easy wins with flow. Easy wins with flow. Catch the easy summer vibes with over $70,000 in cash and prizes. Just top up $15 or more. Activate a prepaid plan. Switch to Flow or bundle your home services to get your share of $70,000 in cash, data, Samsung Galaxy devices, shopping vouchers, and more. You can win when you top it up, switch it up, sign it up, bundle up. Bundle up. Easy wins with Flow. Oh, oh. 
Terms and conditions apply. Need a quick, convenient way to pay your bills and avoid lines? Use the online banking feature from Republic Bank, First Caribbean, or Co-op Bank. Contact them today to set up your online banking and enjoy 24-hour convenience to make your bill payments. Stay safe. Gwenlek, we are united even when we are apart. Let's get tough on breed, yeah, larceny. It will destroy our economy. Larceny threatens our food security. Can hurt us locally, hurt us globally. To all the buyers, ask for license from our produce seller. To all the people, call the for police for them deep in fellas. To all the farmers, don't steal produce from your brother. Then you're selling to traffickers, hotels, and street vendors. Nah, man. Let's do all we can to stop Peridia larceny. New vigilance, new laws, and a tough judiciary. Stop Grenada's organized business crime. It's time. To report Peridia larceny, call 300. Ridgeway Residences, a modern, exclusive residential community offered by Ariza. Purchase one of our completely built houses or let us build for you by simply choosing your lot, choosing your home design from our selection, and let us do the rest. Owning a home does not have to be a frustrating process. information, contact Arisa Credit Union on 415-0994 or send us an email on info at ridgewayresidences.gd. Ridgeway Residences, hassle-free home ownership. Hey kids! It's back to school time with Dutch Lady. Win one of three bicycles when you purchase a Dutch Lady UHT 1 liter or Dutch Lady condensed milk 1,000 gram at any participating outlet. Promotion runs from August 9th to September 30th, 2021. Terms and conditions apply. Dutch Lady Milk, proudly distributed by Hubbard's Agency Department, located on Karani James Boulevard. GBN leads, the others follow. This segment is brought to you by Republic Bank. A message from Republic Bank. Local farmers are concerned about the level of work being done by laborers assigned by the Labor Support Program to assist them on their farms. Anika Alexander has this report. Senator Roderick St. Clair, the Farming and Fishing Communities representative in Parliament, says he has been approached by several farmers within the last few weeks. Senator St. Clair expressed that although farmers are pleased with the Ministry of Agriculture's Labor Support Program, many have communicated concerns about the operations of the initiative. Farmers believe that they should have greater involvement in the selection and management of the workers. The issue is that the quality of the labor that the farmers would receive in that arrangement, they are not happy with it. So they may not get the amount of hours. They cannot even discipline or, or, or communicate to the to the workers because the, the workers that are provided under this arrangement reports to a supervisor and other persons related to that management system. So the farmer basically has no control. So if someone is not doing the work properly, Oh, you cannot speak to me because you are not my boss, you're not my supervisor. And so the farmers actually, some of them are actually refusing the work. And this is very sad because they are saying they cannot afford to be wasting taxpayers' money by having basically short work being, being done on their farms. 
The Farming and Fishing Communities representative related that although the program falls under the Ministry of Agriculture's portfolio, its operations are handled by constituency offices. Senator Sinclair conveyed a solution as to how the authorities can help remedy this stumbling block. What they want the government to do is what has happened in the past, what they are accustomed to doing. If the farmer has his farm and he wants labor, he looks for the persons who can give him the quality of labor that he needs. Okay, so the farmers knows that they know who are the persons who can do the proper work. So that is the key part. So once they have a handle as to who can do the work, then the ministry can then say, well, okay, submit the names of the persons that you want to work for me, and they will go ahead and do the different processing and so on. That is all they're saying. They want to be able to pick the workers because they would know who are the regular workers that can work properly. The senator hopes that these concerns that are brought to the fore are addressed by the relevant authorities. Um, so what we're doing is asking the government, asking the Minister of Agriculture and his team to look into this matter such that we can get a more valuable contribution to agriculture, such that the farmers are more satisfied with the output and that the efforts and intention that the program really should be having is bringing the right results. For GBN News, Anaika Alexander, trainee reporter. Having successfully started the new engine for the first time, the Granlec team is preparing to put the engine into full service over the next week. During the installation period over the past 11 weeks, special civil, mechanical and electrical works have been completed in preparation for the commissioning of the new generator, which will increase the company's overall power generation capacity to 52 megawatts. So there's a lot of work regarding pipe work, mechanical works, the electrical work, cables, control cables, um, making sure that the, the PLC is connected. So all the interconnections for the engine to work properly um, a very important part of the installation. But apart from that, we also have quite a bit of new items that's part of the engine package. New radiators, new air intake system, new centrifuge, a lot of new valves and fittings. So time was spent putting all of this together and making sure that it, 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 it it works the way intended. Clive Hostin, Grand Lecture Chief Engineer. Over the next three weeks, there is the possibility of unplanned service interruptions as the team integrates the new engine into its operating system. Last week, we were able to start the engine, which is a significant milestone. And with that, we were able to test a lot of the pipeworks, make sure that there's no leaks, um, check cables, test cables, make sure they're connected in the right place. So we're at a position where we've got um, speed, engine speed, we can run up to full speed, and the output voltage, that is where it should be. As we go forward, we start getting into the performance testing and low testing of the engine, which is very critical. According to Mr. Hostin, we want customers to be aware that while Grenlec is making every effort to avoid inconvenience, it is not unusual for some disruptions to customers' service during the commissioning, as the team resolves unforeseen challenges that may arise. Mr. Hostin added that having prepared customers for this possibility of outages, he hopes the preparatory work done by the team will facilitate a smooth integration with little to no service interruptions. The company anticipates that the new engine will be commissioned before the end of September. The commissioning process will take a few weeks. We have to make sure that the engine works, works properly and we'll be testing for faults and certain abnormal conditions. I mean, temperatures, pressures, we gotta make sure that the engine can, can work properly at the design conditions. So we'll be um, running it at various loads, see how it interacts with other engines at the power plant. Um, they, it's, it's, it's very um, ticklish in the sense that faults can occur 
So things can happen while we do these initial testing. And it's all in the essence of making sure that the engine works properly. So with that, sometimes the engine can trip, go offline, um, cause on the frequency event, which means that we lose feeders, we have some power outages, but it will be our intention to minimize any unforeseen outages um, to be as short as possible. Grenock apologizes for any inconvenience that may arise and assures customers of his continued commitment to reliably serve in Grenada, Karakou and PT Martinique. Christalina John, GBN News. Now for tonight's I Saw Report. Let's see what our citizen journalist has in store for us. A good eye captures all. GBN I Saw is brought to you by Clevision. Hey, September is just around the corner, so um, let's see. Breakfast! Check! Bar! Check! Tablet! Yes! Doctor! Check! Vision Eye Center is offering all students a free eye examination. For the holiday? Yeah, man. And they have the best prices on glasses. I hear they have glasses as low as $450. But you know it's only for one month. Boy, let me go. I can't miss that. Clear Vision Eye Center keeping students focused so that we can see the world with a clearer vision. Closely. Can you make a guess what they are? Tonight, Shibian's ISO reporter submitted images on how clove seeds are germinated before they are packaged. Aren't they beautiful? Send us your photo and video submission via WhatsApp on 405-3052 or our other social media platforms. I see. Still ahead, New Skills Development Institute launched in St. Patrick. This is News at 7. Five lucky customers are enjoying free drinks, free electricity, free fuel, extra cash account, free internet, cable, and data, all for one year. Hubbard's Live Free for One Year Big Promotion. With just two draws remaining, you can be the lucky winner in August and September for property or vehicle insurance for one year, free cooking gas for one year, and the big free groceries for one year. Live free for one year with Hubbard's in association with Sol Gas, Flow, Grenadian General Insurance, Carrot Brewery, Coca-Cola Grenada Bottling, Grenlick, Communal Corporative Credit Union, Dutch Lady Milk, Promo, Danny, and Supreme. Hubbard's Live Live free for one year big promotion. of me time. Amazing women are classy, fancy, and a little sassy. It's the drink for me. Cheers! Sometimes you've got to show them who's boss. Alpha male? Nah, alpha females are more amazing. Cheers to secure in the bag. We make time for ourselves, for work, friends, and we certainly make time for passion. We're simply amazing. Amazing cream liqueur for the amazing woman in you.
looking for a professional team offering around the clock private and confidential nursing, medical care, and aid services? Then look no further. Nurses Care Grenada is a fully certified, insured, and licensed healthcare facility committed to the reduction and eventual elimination of healthcare disparities affecting the nation. Our registered nurses will visit you at your home, assess your condition, and provide the required treatment under the directive of a doctor. So why worry when there's Nurses Care Grenada? Give us a call, 406-3928. Nurses Care, reliable, trusted professionals we can all depend on. It's time to prepare for an A-plus this term with back-to-school deals from Corks. Shop today for laptops, tablets, printers, and more for a chance to win $1,000 cash. Get it now with Quartz Ready Finance and pay nothing for 60 days. Save big with great deals only from Quartz, bringing value home. This is GBN. We've got the means, the power, and the medium. This segment is brought to you by Flu. You can win when you top it up, switch it up, set it up, bundle up. the easy summer vibes with over $70,000 in cash and prizes. Just top up $15 or more. Activate a prepay plan. Switch to Flow or bundle your home services to get your share of $70,000 in cash. Data, Samsung Galaxy devices, shopping vouchers, and more. You can win when you top it up, switch it up, sign it up, bundle up. Bundle up. Easy wins with Flow. Flow. Low terms and conditions apply. Young people of Mount Rich, St. Patrick and surrounding areas now have the opportunity to be trained in woodwork skills and can gain employment through a skills development program. The Skills Development Institute is located in St. Patrick and is meant to be used as a repair shop for all school furniture. So this is 50 young people who are recruited, of which 40 of them received apprenticeship training in furniture making at two major furniture making enterprises in St. Patrick. The Chantinelle Cooperative Furniture Enterprise and Mr. Fraser's Furniture Making Factory at Mount Crave. To have an institution of this nature located in this area is remarkable indeed, for which the government of Grenada must be highly commended and the residents of this community and St. Patrick as a whole should be justifiably proud. And of course, that was Parliamentary Representative for St. Patrick, Anthony Boston, speaking at the launch as he said the project is one that many should be proud of. Now, the project came to life through efforts of the Ministry of Education and the Government of Grenada. Minister for Education, Honorable Emmeline Pear, spoke on the importance of the skills development. A lot of work has been taking place as it relates to developing the framework in which we are going to move forward into something that is inevitable, that we are going to land into a situation where the demand for skills, the demand for resources that skills are going to provide would be something that we have no choice about. The jobs that are going to be required to fill, the vacancies, would require people with a certain level of skills. And so if we don't build a foundation that is solid enough, we are going to find ourselves in a lot of problems. The project is expected to roll out in the coming months. Following the release of the International Panel of Climate Change IPCC sixth assessment report, climate change and its impact on the Caribbean was the focus of a recent press conference held by the Caribbean Community Climate Change Center. The Caribbean, in, other, in the words of Prime Minister of Dominica, is on the front line of the war on climate change, a war that we are on pace to lose and lose badly. Unless the world significantly ramps up its climate ambition, the science on this has never been clearer. With the sixth assessment report, it is now unequivocally clear. 
Since August 2005, the Caribbean Community Climate Change Center, 5Cs, has been the key node for information on climate change issues and the region's response to managing and adapting to climate change. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, reports, released on August 9th, foretells dire consequences for the Caribbean as the latest science is suggesting that even if nations started sharply cutting emissions to Today, a hotter climate is certain. Executive Director of Five Cs, Dr. Colin Young, unpacked the IPCC report and discussed its implications for the Caribbean region. The findings confirm what we have been experiencing and telling the world. Year after year, we see the number and severity of climate hazards increasing. Year after year, we see and experience more frequent and severe droughts. Year after year, we see uh, and experience more frequent and intense heavy downpours. Year after year, we bear witness to increased coastal erosion and the losses of our beaches. Year after year, we feel the hotter days and night the time temperatures and experience debilitating heat waves. And year after year, we hear of the hurricane seasons that are above average and that are packed with Cat 4 and 5 hurricanes. Because of its size, the Caribbean is responsible for a small contribution to global warming. Yet, it is at the forefront of the dreaded impacts of climate change. Since 1950, over 324 natural disasters have struck the Caribbean, killing over 250,000 people and affecting more than 24 million. Between 1970 and 2020, 91.5% of Caribbean disasters are climate change related hurricanes, floods, droughts, for example. Dr. Young stressed on the impact of climate change on Caribbean economies. Between 2010 and 2020, the region has been impacted by over 150 disasters that directly impact over 22 million people. Today, the Caribbean, on average, experiences four significant events. These are events that causes losses of 20% of GDP or more per year. Annually, the region suffers losses the equivalent of 2 to 3 percent of its entire GDP. According to Dr. Young, the United Nations Climate Change Conference, COP26, scheduled for November 2021, presents the opportunity to press the global community with the need to act now and reduce green gas emissions in an effort to mitigate the effects of climate change on the Caribbean. Trelana Charles, GBN News. Stay with us. Sports up next. We support you at every stage of your life. For business. For your education. For your financial freedom. For that new ride. Upgrade your life with the communal. Contact us today. Are you looking for quality herbs and herbal supplements? Or are you thinking about having a complete body cleanse to jumpstart your health? Then no need to look further. Visit Nirvana Natural Health Clinic, Detox Center, and Natural Health Store. We carry a wide range of herbal products for kidney and gallstone cleansing, male sexual enhancement formulas, asthma and sinusitis, gas and bloating, acid reflux, constipation, arthritis, imbalanced hormones, female health issues, liver cleansing, weight loss, and so much more. Also available, colonic irrigation, holistic health consultations, essential oils, and diffusers. Look out for our online natural health store coming soon. Call 231-6642-418-7115 or 449-7753. To find out about our delivery options or to book an appointment, visit us at Belmont St. George's, close to the Forledge, Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Nirvana Natural Health Clinic. Detox your way to health. 
with a Digicel Prime Bundle. Get double the dedicated Sportsmax data to enjoy the greatest sports event happening now. Live in the Sportsmax app. Get a 30-day Digicel Prime Bundle today in the My Digicel app. Digicel, better together. Introducing Color by Sissons. It's new, innovative and classy, and it cut above the rest. Your one-stop shop for bath tubs, kitchener, customized doors and windows, and even a new paint job. We also sell quartz and solid surface countertops. At Eminent Hardware, we offer best prices, excellent service, efficiency, and reliability. Visit us at Dusty Highway, Grand and St. George, or call telephone number 440-6757. Eminent Hardware, from foundation to roof, let's build together. Sporting fans, Nai Cruikshank, Grenada's first Paralympic swimmer, will swim tonight at 10.05 p.m. our time. She is the flag bearer for the 2020 Paralympic Games, accompanied by Chief de Mission Kwame Hippolyte. It's her very first appearance at the Paralympic Games, having registered as a Paralympic Committee in 2017. And their first registered Paralympic athlete, Shauna Charles, spoke of changing the national perspective towards people with disabilities. My Cruikshank, a 19-year-old, known as the Queen, carries the flag. Nye has been making quite a splash, including being the first para swimmer to compete to qualify for Tokyo 2020. Since she started swimming at the age of seven, she gained her foundation as an active participant of the Dolphin Swim Club. The official formation of the Grenada Paralympic Committee opened the avenue for swimmers like Cruikshank to be officially classified as a para-athlete and compete against other athletes who are differently abled. She will be participating in the women's 100-meter breaststroke. CFU Boys on the 14 and Girls on the 14 Challenge Series continues. Spice Girls on the 14 lost their match against Haiti 10 0, while the Spice Boys lost 4 0. Here's some footage of the boys' match. The name of the captain for Haiti Lebrun Chelorens. It's like German, almost. And Lebrun, the captain, is looking forward for his, his first goal of the tournament. Yesterday he had a couple of as, as assists and now could be his first goal. And the third one for Haiti in this match. Let's see what has happened. Lebrun, goal. Goal for Haiti, the third one. And the match is three nil in favor of Haiti. They have scored six goals in two matches. This great team from Haiti. Ahead of the trip, Spice Girls head coach Raquel Hood said she expects the girls to apply what they've learned in training and gain international experience at the CFU Girls on the 14 Challenge Series so that playing football will become easier in the future. <laughs> preparation with the team it made it easier for us to plan a session because the girls just came from a previous tournament U14 tournament so it was just basically our main focus was just getting them to understand their position and playing as a team I just want to know that the girls grabs what we taught them here in Grenada and to build their confidence and to get the experience so next day it will be even easier for them that's our look at sports. Stay with us for a look around the region.
welcome to your One Caribbean Media Hookup. I am your presenter, Beverly Tellisford. Private school students will not be exempted from vaccination. According to the Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony, during Monday's COVID-19 update, when he revealed that vaccination consent forms are also being distributed at private learning institutions. HGPTV has more. The Minister of Health, in providing an update on the ongoing distribution of vaccination consent forms to parents, revealed that the response remains positive. It was noted that the Ministry of Health has been providing guidance to the Ministry of Education to ensure that all measures are put in place for the smooth reopening of schools. Masking, social distancing, and of course sanitizing. And then we want to make sure that people are vaccinated. So once these four elements are in place, I think we can open schools and it would be in a much safer environment. Ahead of the possible reopening of schools in September, President Erfan Ali had announced in July 2021 that the government will be sourcing the Pfizer vaccines, which has been approved for use on children ages 12 to 17, to vaccinate the country's adolescent population. Following this announcement, it was revealed by the PAHO WHO representative to Guyana, Dr. Louis Codina, that Guyana will receive 100,000 doses of the U.S.-made Pfizer COVID-19 vaccines in September to vaccinate 50 thousand adolescents. While the Ministry of Education has recently begun distributing consent forms to parents whose children attend public schools, Minister Anthony noted that the ministry is also working with private institutions to ensure those students access to life-saving jobs. Well, all schools, whether public or private, will have to uh, comply with the requirements uh, relating to COVID-19. The order does not make an exempt, ex exemption whether you're private or not. So this goes across the board for all schools and similarly uh, the ministry of through the Ministry of Education we will be working with those private schools to ensure that uh, children that meet, meet the age requirement uh, would be able to get vaccinated at those schools as well. Earlier it was reported that the Ministry of Health is working in tandem with the Ministry of Education to distribute consent forms to parents of children ages 12 to 17 to public schools. The minister maintained that while vaccination of the country's adolescent population is necessary, access in the vaccine remains a choice. Meanwhile, the minister also announced that the long-awaited Johnson & Johnson single-shot vaccine is expected to arrive in the country on Monday. The government of Guyana um, would have purchased 34,000 doses of J&J vaccines. Uh, this was a CARICOM initiative uh, brokered with the African Union. Um, it took us a while to get all the elements sorted out, but I'm pleased to say that um, by today we would be getting those vaccines. St. Lucian media worker Hamilton Gregory says he is fighting for his life after contracting COVID-19. He's sharing his story as he gasped for every breath of life laid up in a hospital bed. HDS News Force reports. Pairs and the family decided to investigate the whereabouts of media worker Hamilton Gregory after not hearing from him for a couple of days. Loved ones and friends decided to check his residence after many searches came up empty. He was discovered unwell and sick at his home. Lo and behold, he had contracted the COVID-19 virus. I'm in the house and imagine I walk in that and I know why I'm in the house in my You check it? Yeah. So then when when the family end up calling it, he say, Well that is normal with me. Not on St. Paul's. So they came, as I imagine the people knocking the door, I will name the people knocking the door, nothing. So when them people say, Oh, that is normal. So for my family, I believe they, when they check police, they check. The fire service, they came, yeah, they came. Well, they opened. That's right. When the people open, I myself, I know, I know that they're that right. I know, I'm weak, I tell you. I'm weak. I know that I could barely stand up. And then they have to rush me to hospital. Gregory, who has been at the respiratory hospital since Thursday, August 19th, 2021, says he won't be released unless his breathing stabilizes. 
Well, I'm feeling much better because all the test, the problem is, is my breathing. Right. My breathing, yeah, my breathing, the level of my breathing, I believe it's supposed to be at for the at the the lowest for normal breathing is 95 but i be loading 95 i have 93 92 so unless my breathing i go back to at least 96 97 so they can release me from the hospital the People's National Party in Jamaica is blaming the government for what it calls mismanagement of the COVID-19 pandemic in the midst of a third wave of infection. TVJ has that story. I am very upset with the Andrew Holness administration. People's National Party member Philip Paulwell criticizing the government for what he says is the management of the coronavirus in the country. Mr. Paulwell, who was speaking at a political conference in South Central St. Catherine Saturday, reasoned that the government is toying with the lives of Jamaicans in a bid to keep the economy afloat. And I hear they're talking about balancing lives with livelihoods. And let us not fool ourselves. Sometimes I'm not better talk about livelihoods. I'm talking about big business. They're talking about various other interests. But I believe lives must be more important. You can't be balancing lives with livelihood. You have to put lives as a priority. The government has maintained that it has to balance lives and livelihoods during the pandemic. However, the PMP member says the relaxing of measures in July is to blame for the spike the country is seeing. In July, when you expect the most virulent of the variants, you open up the country further. You start to allow parties where thousands of people are gathered. Foreigners mixing with local. What are you going to have? Close to 1,400 people have died from COVID-19 in Jamaica. Pauline Knight, the wife of senior PNP member Katie Knight, was among the latest victims. I called comrade Katie Knight a while ago, and tears came to my eyes. It is not easy to lose a loved one. And that's your one Caribbean media hookup. I was your presenter, Beverly Tellisford. Let's recap the headlines. Grenada's health minister to be ticketed for violating COVID-19 protocols following maskless appearance with movie star Steven Seagal. Health officials identify location of COVID-19 clusters across the island of Grenada. Three parishes identified. Calls for a review of quarantine protocols from persons entering the country. Preparatory work has begun for the start of the St. John's River flood mitigation project. In around the globe, private schools in Guyana will not be exempted from vaccination, says Health Minister. And COVID-stricken St. Lucian media worker pleads with the public from hospital bed. In sports, Grenada's first Paralympic swimmer, Nai Cruikshank, bears the Grenadian flag at the 2020 Paralympic Games in Tokyo. And CFU Boys Under 14 and Girls Under 14 Challenge Series continues. If you missed any part of this newscast, a repeat of it will be broadcast at 10 o'clock tonight. Continue to follow us online at www.gbn.gd, or on GBN Television's Facebook page and YouTube channel for these and other top stories. I'm Chrislyn Lashington. That's the news. We'll see you again. Good night.